Shooting it raw? Yes. Shooting it raw. But let's let's move on to your other photograph because it's also uh, oh, we have another one. Yeah, well, yeah. It's, oh, it's we did the, do four. Okay. Dagger Bee. No, just because uh, your photos are so good, we're okay. going to do them all. Like cool. Um, cool. Cloak and Dagger Bee. Let me just describe the image. So you you've talked about the importance of having a nice of removing, separating. So in this case, the the, the background is a perfect, beautiful, rich green, uh, out of focus, and against that is this high kind of contrasting violet flower that has four or five petals to it with a deep sort of uh i guess it's a, is that the stamen that goes down deep yep okay so deep stamen and like perched, the stamen comes out right okay it's the right. bell right so uh but if it's perched on it is this incredible insect uh so the name of this photograph is a cloak and dagger bee um so it's this beautiful bee looking insect that's blue and black and What's really amazing as well is that you can see the reflection in its eyes that is matrix-like, mesmerizing. It's, um, so describe how you made this photo, when you made this photograph, how you made this photograph, and why, uh, like for me, it's just like, I, like all your photographs, I'm just, I'm just amazed. So. so if I was to do this photo again, mm -hmm. I'd actually, oh, I've already cropped it a bit, so I'd probably even do it more. Wow, wow, wow yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah this this is one of those highly technical took me three days oh wow to uh to shoot um this was in Xingmun, uh, some beautiful little butterfly gardens there mm -hmm. and i was there because i'd seen quite a few hummingbird hawk moths yeah yeah and the blue banded bee right and those are the ones i actually wanted to photograph right 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 and the uh, the serendipitous element of this is i thought i mean it this insect is half a centimeter yeah. long yeah. i mean it, they are tiny mm -hmm. and i didn't know that that's actually what i was taking right. when i took right. the photo right. i thought it was a blue banded bee because if you look it yeah looks, they look, you can't tell it's flying it's, in it's, it's small, got the flower for sure so basically, um, I tried with different lenses, different focal lengths, with flash, without flash, different shutter speed. So I probably took about 2,000 different photos. Wow, wow, wow. And I have other photos which I've used sure. recently on my blog with the blue banded bee. Um, and the, the tricky thing with this is, and one thing that my, my, one of my mentors has, has always said is, you have to get it full frame. Mm. Now, how do you get... A six center, a, 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 tiny, a six tiny. millimeter bee, yeah. full frame. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that crop is probably about, it's probably about fifty percent. Right. But that meant um, I, that was actually using a hundred millimeter lens. Wow. Although I actually had more success with the longer ones, but that one turned out because I was able to get there and then have my finger ready. And again, it's that burst. Yeah. Of yeah. And uh, unless the insect is 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 is. I don't know, dead or, or, or not moving. Mm -hmm. It's an extremely difficult insect to try and because they move so quickly sure, as well, and sure. they don't like people. No, no. Um, one thing that I do try and do is I use quite a large diffuser sometimes, and by hiding behind that, they don't recognise me right, as a human. Right, right. They just think I'm a I'm a building or yeah. something. Yeah, so it's funny. It's funny how animals, like when I go around on my bicycle or motorcycle, uh, animals, especially monkeys. If I'm if I'm wearing uh, if I'm in the car, of course it's one of those things. If you're in the car, they just don't even yeah. they associate Same you with, with an tigers, animal, right? Yeah. Yeah. But uh, so the, the monkeys, if I if I wear like the helmet and the, and the glasses, they don't quite know I'm a I'm a threat. But if I take off the glasses and they see my eyes, they're like, oh shit, I'm out of here. So it's it's a I'm sure insects must also oh, be absolutely. like. Absolutely. I mean, you can see it with birds all the time. If you're walking near a bird don't look at it mm. and then when you look at it it'll fly away right, right. It, it's a day it they triggers, see your yeah. eyes yeah yeah um, one of the things the guy teaching me photography talked to me about was if you're trying to get close to like birds or bigger mammals or whatever sing a little song to yourself or pretend you're chewing gum and don't look at them because if they think you're already eating well mm. you, you don't want to eat them right right <laughs> it's right, a funny right, little trick right, right. going up to birds and you're still talking to yourself people think you're That's a bit loopy but super interesting. also don't walk straight at them you're always walking yeah, in zigzag yeah, yeah, kind yeah. of thing so it's quite it's quite funny the sort of craft of trying to get right. close to things like that tiny little bee and again you've got the 
you've got that sort of craft which allows me to get that yeah. image yeah. Um, and again part of that sculpture is always to try and look for that background and you don't have any distractions or whatever mm -hmm. and then you've got the luck that it was not the bee that I was trying to right. photograph and then as you pointed out I've never seen that before that hexagonal is like the back end of a Lamborghini or yeah, something yeah. That, that design the inside eyes. Yeah, yeah. so now of course what I want to do is get 10 times closer right, to that right, bee so right. there's all and then because that that's a great image i love it yeah. but it's not it's not award winning right yet. it's got different it's got sure. flaws to yeah, it. yeah, yeah so to try and then how then do i perfect my how well I, actually i've seen this great image of this guy what he did is he he took a flower and he cut out the end of it and put his camera on it so then the the, the bees and things are actually going into, into the, the yeah. flower and then yeah. you have a remote so that's the kind of thing i'm right. i've got these tentacles that I call them but I, I think I've got about eight different things that I want to do which uh -huh. will take my photography to a to another level. Wow. Rob this is cool to just talk shop and d dive in. Uh, I'm not gonna ask you to talk about your gear because uh, no free pub for those companies um, because we could do that. Uh, more importantly you do give courses you have given courses. Somebody who's listening to this and is a beginning photographer do you have a bit of advice when you've given classes what, what would you say has helped them as photographers move ahead sure i think i mean equipment is important Ever, mm, so sure. funny i've heard so many interviews oh no equipment isn't important no it's important yeah, because you you don't get that crispness that clarity that ability to focus quickly sure. with with the uh, lower end equipment you just don't um so one of the things is invest as much as you can in the equipment. So get a full frame camera, get get some decent lenses, um, and that just that alone it, it, it will help your photography. Yep. Or it will te you can then learn. I mean, obviously you don't want to go out and buy the best and not know how to use it, which is I think what people are saying. But once you begin to squeeze the different best bits out of your equipment, I think that's when you realise that you are learning more mm -hmm. so i suppose my advice to people is during about 30 years um between my photojournalism and actually doing my doing my blog i still took photos and i, I look back at them and I, you know, I did an exhibition and stuff and i look at them and go yeah they're okay the biggest difference was i went to other people to try and learn mm -hmm. how to be a better photographer yeah and um, so whether it's uh, there's one book I'd recommend called, uh, it's by Tony and Chelsea Northrup and they're, they're excellent you know they will they will really they dive quite and they're very good teachers as well and there's video components to it okay um, but I think it's really coming back for me what changed for me was how, what is the image that I want to create and how do I go about creating it? Because then what happens is, okay, so if I want a picture of that flower that really stands out, what do I want it? I want it to stand alone. So what about the background? And mm -hmm. then you think, well, hold on a minute. If it's a pink flower, how about I take a meter piece size of card mm -hmm. and put that behind it? Then you've got this lovely blurry yellow right. background because the camera won't see that it's a yellow piece of sure, card. It just sure. looks like a, a yellow field of barley or something. Yeah. And then you've separated your image because you're thinking of the image that you want, which is that single stem of the pink, yeah. that the, the very pretty pink grass here in yeah. Hong Kong. So I think the, the key thing for me is be very critical of your own photos and really think what is the image you want to create because mm -hmm. that's how I got to my yeah. um, my forktail sunbird yeah. image was yeah. I want to be able to blow up that image to a two meter print wow and I want that fo uh, sunbird in focus the sharpest blurry focus. I want this I want that I want it at that time of day yeah. because it's going to give me this mm -hmm. well you're what I'm listening to is actually uh, a mastery of, of what you're of your not to saying that you're you know not to hide from the idea of being a master, but it's kind of getting towards that mastery of, of what you're doing in anything. So, and again, respect. I look at the different other photographers, whether it's Andy Rouse or um, 
Tin Man or, or whoever it is and look at those award-winning photos and you see what's really great about them. Unfortunately, most of them are polar bears and right. cheetah cubs and stuff. <laughs> furry animals. <laughs> furry mammals, or maybe rhinos occasionally and or well, elephants or giraffes or something. But what, 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 What's good about this, uh, well, the podcast, I think, is also what's neat is uh, that being able to share. So one of the people I had here was... Uh, yeah, uh, Carolina and uh, Arthur, her husband. The two, two go herping all the time. Yeah, yeah, I've seen and her. She's really, really good. Yeah. She's re and she's, you know, really showing the beauty of, of snakes. And it's just like, yeah, and, and your your snake images. I mean, I I love that everybody's um, quality and and effort, all of it, is just getting better and better. Like there doesn't seem to be a kind of peak. Oh, we've reached the best photographs ever. No, no but no, it's, it's still coming. I think what I see with a lot of those photos, and, and myself included, is you get to a point where you, you're learning about light mm. and how it works, yeah. which is, a, which is well, sounds it pretty is. obvious, right? But yeah. you know, photography actually means painting with light in, in Greek. And to learn about how it diffuses and this and this, and you go out and then you find the species and you take its photo... The tricky thing then is to find behavior. Right, right. To actually be in a place. And again, you know, who, uh, snake behavior is maybe not as interesting as a, as a jaguar mm -hmm. <laughs> or a cheetah or a lion or mm -hmm. an elephant or whatever it is. So I think there are limitations just from a point of view of you, if you want to make your photos, you know, sort of more exciting, right. I suppose. Um, hence, you know, the leopard cat having all those lights. Sure, but if but I show that bee, that funnily enough, I mean, I think it's because I posted another picture right after it. But that bee that I chose, I think, got nine likes. Yeah, yeah. And it's it's like one of my not least liked, but, but it's it, it's it, funny it how that's a. But it's funny how that has become a barometer of quality to a certain extent. I mean, I realize your, your internal barometer, your internal standard, but it's I there, it it just reinforces the idea that that. To a certain extent, as a communicative uh, object, powerful images should evoke or do evoke something in a, in a viewer, in a receiver, sure. in a thing. So, so okay. Well, I just People... learned uh, yesterday that I've, I've got these three awards coming up, which I can't talk about. But two of those are arthropods. A nice. Uh, insects. Well, yeah. actually one's a spider. But um, it's, it's interesting to see that there's actually a recognition for that as well as... I'm sure the main winner is still going to be a furry <laughs> mammal. <laughs> but we won't talk about that anymore. Ah, screw those, uh, screw those mammals. No, I love them too. I can't no, wait no, to get over to Sri Lanka yeah, and start yeah. taking some amazing, you know, I just can't wait to travel again, uh, yeah, like yeah, I think course. every single person I talk to. Okay, so I think the buffet is closing as far as uh, feeding the mosquitoes. Thank you so much, Rob, for joining me. Um, I, I, you know, this has been really good. Uh, I hope I can get a billion people to, to view, to view your, your websites and to, to order your book uh, and to just be inspired. Like, I, I certainly am inspired. Good stuff. Thank, Thank you very much. You, sir. Thank you. Boom. So is life really a gift? Really? Can you make every second count? That's the whole point of the podcast. So if you like what you've seen and you're inspired, because that really is my mission, then please give it a like, subscribe, and share. Shooting it raw? Yes. Shooting it raw.